welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Vladimir Solohub. Joining me now in a series of interviews about fresh faces in Ukraine's politics is an MP, former journalist and civil activist, Ms. Svetlana Zalishuk. Ms. Zalishuk, welcome to Viewpoint. Thank you. Ms. Zalishuk, you are one of the so-called fresh faces in Ukrainian uh, parliament. Um, uh, can, you, can you tell us how does it feel uh, to be, you, you were you were never in politics before. Um, you were you were a journalist. You were a civil activist. How does it feel to be making Ukraine's policy right now? I think first of all, it's very challenging. Sometimes it's uh, frustrating, but most of all, it's exciting. And uh, the key thing, probably, to define the whole state. What do we feel? It's a huge responsibility that is here on our shoulders and we understand that we came to the politics in an extremely dramatic times for this country. So we are responsible for those windows of opportunity that have been created by the whole country, by the society. And it's up to us whether we will deliver. Uh, Mr. Lishuk, you were previously a journalist and you're used to criticizing the politics. You're used to questioning the politics, uh, politicians. Now you're in, in their shoes. Uh, do you regret changing the roles? I think I will never regret. As a journalist, most of all, we were asking the right questions. But now we have to give the right answers as well. But I have to tell you that journalism and civic activism was probably the best school for a politician in Ukraine. Why? Because it was for 10 years when we were demanding, for example, better legislation on access to public information, media trans ownership transparency, and also uh, anti-corruption policies, transparent public procurement. It was 10 years ago where we were drafting these uh, laws. And it's only this year, last year, 2015, when I'm personally, myself, already being an MP, was able to adopt to pass all these reforms that have been demanded by the society for so many years. Ms. Lishuk, there were quite a few, um, um, new, quite a few MPs who came to, to, to power without any political background, without any background from, from, from government. And um, a lot of people who were, who were there on, on Euromaidan, on, on Euromaidan um, almost two years ago, they were demanding exactly the same. They wanted changes, they wanted to see new people. Um, not all of them have uh, fulfilled the, 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 the responsibility, the expectations, have met the expectations expectations of the people on, on Maidan. Uh, what do you feel about, how do you feel about your peers, about the, the people exactly like you who came to, to Parliament uh, as, as a fresh start and are now being heavily criticised? I think, first of all, it's logical and it will be very, it would be impossible to meet all of the expectations because of they were so high and the capacity of the state institutions was so low. Uh, let me mention just that the salaries for civil servants, for politicians are so low that many people wouldn't dare to leave their business, their normal job and go into politics to be able to change those systems from inside. But at the same time, I have to say that this parliament is probably the best convocation since the beginning of our modern history, since 1991. Because we have approximately more than 50% of those people have never been to the politics that are now in the parliament. We have the biggest number of women. It's around 12%, not as much as we would like. But uh, we, anyway, we are moving forward and it's a great step uh, forward. I also would like to mention that during the last year we managed to adopt, I don't know, uh, dozens of those revolutionary uh, laws, uh, changes, reforms that we promised uh, during Euromaidan. I think there is a big, big gap though between the passing the laws and their implementation. But it's already up to many other executive branch, right? We have government, we have prosecutor office, we have police, minister for interior, we have courts, we have judges. All these small systems, all these institutions have to be uh, enabled to work properly now.
Mr. Shu, can we talk a little bit about the corruption fights, the, the, the problem which has been on upon the Ukrainian people, Ukrainian state for, for many, many years. And uh, again, one of the reasons why the people went on the Euromodern revolution was because they did not want to stand with corruption anymore. Um, the, the, the most recent example of passing the so-called anti-corruption laws, which were necessary for Ukraine to get the visa-free regime, revealed that even the MPs are not willing to, 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 to commit to fulfill for, for, for full corruption fight. So how big of a problem is that in the parliament, that even the MPs are not willing to do that? Well, to be honest, I think that corruption is still the spine of that old system. Uh, I would say even a post-Soviet system that we live with in Ukraine. And despite the fact that many people, many new people, fresh faces as you call them, are now in the politics, we still have many of those representatives of big financial groups that have monopoly in different spheres, that have uh, packages of shares in different factions, in different parties. And this is what we are facing as, uh, as fresh uh, faces. So uh, it's not going to change in one day. And I would agree with you. Well, I'm sorry, Ms. Lichuk. It's been already more than two years, almost two years. Yeah, and uh, yeah, probably it will take more than uh, next five or maybe ten years in order to uh, bring Ukraine to the level of, let's say, Poland or Baltic states. But uh, we see this fight. It's happening. Uh, I, I would like to mention just uh, two days ago, me and my colleague Sergei Leshenko, who is the best known investigative journalist before and now in the politics, my colleague in my faction, uh, we were given a call and there were some threats with regards to the latest invest anti-corruption investigations that Sergei disclosed, disclosed already as an MP. So what I'm trying to say, that system is still there, despite the many efforts that have been put and invested in it. So we still face this corruption as the key, as, as I said, it's a key, it's a spine of the, of the old system that we are trying to, to break. Another problem which was revealed uh, in the course of passing these uh, visa-free laws is the so-called um, anti-discrimination, sexual orientation, anti-discrimination provision, uh, which is supposed to be in part of the labor code. Only upon, on the fifth attempt did the parliament manage to pass this, this, this key requirement, key requirement for, for the EU uh, of, for, for into, into the labor code. And again, a lot of people were surprised that the new faces in the parliament were not voting for this provision. The new faces which came to the parliament as a result of Euromaidan revolution were not willing to support it. So is there some, some, some other problem in, in, in Ukraine parliament? I don't think so. If you look at the last votes, you would see that maybe 95, 98% of those new people who came to the parliament uh, voted for the anti-discrimination provisions. Uh, the only thing that probably there were some people... I'm sorry, religious... the, the Summer Pomish faction, which is the brand new political uh, once party, again, they did but not... If you look at those new people, younger, younger generation in Summer Pomish, you would notice that they voted for the legislation. But here I wanted to comment on it, that some people from Summer Pomish, since they came from the western part of Ukraine, they are more, much more sensitive and probably influenced by church, because it plays a great role in the western Ukraine. At the same time, let me also mention that it's for the first time in Ukrainian history, Ukrainian politicians and peace participated in the uh, LGBT pride during the spring. It was me and my uh, colleague Sergei Leshenko. Two first ever MPs went openly and said, we came from Euromaidan and we will be defend the values, not only by declarations, but we are ready to go into the streets together with these activists. Moreover, I would like to remind you that it's for the first time when president of Ukraine was also very clear whether these people have or have no right to conduct their march of equality, as it was called. And president was and president said, after Euromaidan, after the revolution of dignity, we have to admit that not only us have this dignity. It's not only about our dignity, but it was about the fact that we have to uh, regard, esteem others' dignities, right? So that's why he supported the act, action, he supported the march. And I think it's the, this 
sign is a symbol that uh, it's way, way, way uh, f far from those uh, previous rhetorics and approaches and understanding. I think we are living in a different culture now. Well, it looks like uh, there is some um, hope in Ukrainian parliament and also in Ukrainian politics. Um, Ms. Svetlana Zyshuk, many thanks for coming to us and sharing your thoughts. Really appreciate it. It was really interesting talking to you. Um, this has been a discussion about new people, Ukraine's politics. I'm Vladimir Slohub. Thank you for watching Viewpoint. Thank you for inviting right. me. Thank you very much again for finding the time and to, to come and talk to us. Really appreciate it.